Hey, I'll fix. Do you know the best part if you're a guy of owning a dually back pickup? I don't know what. You're able to say, honey, does this make my ass look big? Mm. <laughs> if you want to hear more about the new Super Duty trucks, stay right with us. You've asked it yourself, admit it. Hey everybody, welcome to Car Coach Reports. The uh, his turn, her turn du jour. I would be the his turn part, Paul Bryan, along with Lauren Fick, the Car Coach. I'm the her turn. <laughs> she, she always is. The Ford Super Duties. Yep, 2020, and that means F250 to F450. Right. So this is a significant chunk of business for Ford Company. They sell almost 900,000 of these per year in the F-150 right. and through the line. What is that, 39 years of the best-selling vehicle? If you take all the F-Series, which includes F-150 to F-450, yeah. it's the best-selling vehicle period for and the I, last almost 40, 40 years. And, and 45 years or something like that is the best-selling truck in America. That's a significant chunk of business for Ford Motor Company, and that's what pays the bills so they can build all the other cars you don't really make so much money out. And, and on top of that, not only is it big business, but it helps their business because it's significant bragging rights too. Oh yeah, because you know Ram and Chevy would love to have that. And Ram just got in front of Chevy for the first time, for the first time yeah. ever with their new Ram truck. And we've reviewed that. You can check that out up here. The Ram Heavy Duty is an impressive vehicle. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of partial to Ford. They've always had Ford trucks. Yeah, if if this uh, review of our look at these vehicles has the distinct feeling of a Valentine's card for Ford Motor Company. We've had this thing out in the dirt. We've been towing. We've been on road. All the time that we were doing it, we were seated in the lap of luxury inside the vehicle. Uh, there's, there's very little that they have missed in this car. Our Car Coach Reports ratings cover performance, handling, visibility, safety, technology, seating comfort, design, quality, and value. That's a lot. We have 10 different categories, and all the ratings are down below because we discussed this when we first started driving this vehicle. But Paul and I have come up with a different way to give you the Car Coach Reports rating this week. Well, yeah, for this particular vehicle, I mean, one of us is five points off a perfect score and the other is six points off a perfect score. So if you're that much into the numbers, then go see where we thought it was deficient. Right. But boy, let me tell you, there's not a lot here to not like about this truck. I think the big things we need to cover, what's new for 2020 that's different from the 2019s. And there was a big change in 2017. We want the all aluminum body, yeah. more the aluminum, you know, the chassis. Everything changed, bigger brakes, but they still have two gas engines and now one diesel engine. And the gas engines are the 6.2 liter gas and the 7.3 liter. But then they brought in a new diesel engine this year. Six, seven. Yeah, the Power Stroke. Yeah, and it's got gobs o torque. 475 horsepower and 1,050 pound-feet of torque. Why 1,050? What's the story, Paul? Well, if you want to be best in class with some things, then you go ahead and you stretch out a little bit more out of it so you can say, hmm. Ours is bigger than yours. Well, Ram offers an optional heavy-duty engine that has a thousand pound-feet of torque if you need it. So they have Ford to says ours is standard, standard. And I'm sure all of you are going to be able to feel that 50 pounds of torque. Well, you, you well, you won't feel that, but you do feel a thousand pound-feet of torque. And if you've never driven a vehicle with that kind of torque, this thing can barely keep the tires on the ground at so much torque. Uh, they also offer the Tremor package, yeah. which has got. No higher lift, it's got the black wheels, and we've had this offer. We took the Tremor package offer. We've driven the one ton, which is the F350, the F450, which is their Super Duty. You can get it with a cab and chassis now. You can get so many combinations: long bed, short bed, crew cab, extended cab, King no Ranch, cab. Platinum, base model, right. where is right? Uh, know, where King is. Ranch, which is what this is. Yeah, got now this has all the different tow haul modes. There's a new Pro trailer towing package that's adapted to this. So if you've ever backed up a gooseneck or a fifth wheel, been there, done that, you need to like sometimes jockey the car around a little bit. Sure. You don't have to with this. You used to, if for regular trailer towing, a lot of manufacturers have that, but now they've added in that much extra. And of course, the whole pro checklist as well. They've got that. There's exhaust braking as well, which yeah. is really nice like for a, the, for like the a down jake brake. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it's got a lot of stuff on it. The only thing that I felt was missing and we, and we both kind of went at the same time yeah. was there is wireless charging 
in the in the main uh, center con. Well, we're, we're both fighting for the charger, and then I realize there's this little bay on top above the center stack. I said, what a perfect place for a second charger yeah. port, or at least a place to plug in. It's America, the land of wretched excess. We need to have two wireless chargers. Four cup holders and the biggest damn center console you've ever seen. I mean, you can put a purse in there, your laptop, hanging files. If you're using it as a work truck in an everyday vehicle, you got it. Seating comfort Look, is the best. Uh, I have to say. Uh, yeah, it is. They do a massage. You can do, there's great lumbar bone left and right. Yes. Uh, massage programs, everything else. The, the heated steering wheel was a little bit hard to find at first, but once we found it, it was like three fine. steps into the climate control on the yeah. main screen. And I did think the main screen was a little bit small. I mean, you're looking at RAM and they've got like basically a laptop yeah, screen uh, vertically mounted. I mean, we're kind of all getting used to bigger cool. screens. But you know what? It's still better than the GM one, which is just so damn yeah, small. I think. <laughs> so I mean, from the, that perspective, I mean, you can't ding it on visibility. It's got safety. It's got forward collision warning. The only thing we did notice one thing it didn't have. Now maybe available on the top line, and they may be adding it later. Is the active cruise control? Yeah. But it did have cruise yeah. control. Yeah. Is that a reason to not buy it? No. No. If you're you looking at trucks and you're looking at a Super Duty, something that's going to haul something, that you're going to plow whatever. You want to use this as your one and only vehicle? You got to look at this one. You got drive all the competition. We've driven the Ram. We've driven the Chevy. You can check out our snarky comments on the Chevy truck here, because let me tell you, we have a lot of people mad about our Chevy truck comments. We've well, driven all of them. We've driven the the Super Duty version of it. We've driven the the regular half ton, hey, and there were when, some issues. When they're, when they're good, they're good, and when uh, we see something, we're going to say something. What? There's one vehicle that's sort of leaving this category, which is sad. The Nissan Titan XD. Diesel, that sweet spot between yeah. half ton and three quarter ton, they weren't selling them for whatever reason, and they're no longer going to carry diesel trucks. If you're looking for a deal, there are some deals on the Nissan Titan XD, and you can check out our review as well. And uh, come along for the ride with us. Okay, here we go.
are at the end of the day. And the Spent one the day with this truck. And and Still one late. of the things that you know we have been we have been fairly tough on the Chevrolet and, and kind of tough on the Ram, but the Ram's a pretty damn good truck. But when, and we have also written love letters to this. We try to give you a clean, unbiased, unfettered, uninfluenced look at everything that we do. True, and Ford's so, been doing this for, oh my God, since yeah. like 2010. So, so they're do that. Right. But, but nevertheless, uh, the other thing that it reminds me of when we get back here is the aluminum architecture that's going on down here in the execution that I like a lot, that I've liked from the start on this. And I, I, there's so many things about it. There's a reason why it's the leader in the segment. True. They don't screw up. Right, uh, well they know what it takes. They ask yeah. their customers and they follow through. Now that doesn't mean that Ram isn't doing that or that GM isn't doing that. Sure. But the idea is that if you're gonna come out with a new Super Duty, there has to be something more. So they tried to add, perform different engines, upgrade the safety, upgrade the handling. The steering is much better. Than yeah, it car. is. They did that electronic overlay over the hydraulic and it, and it really, really works nice. Right, seating comfort, much improved. So basically everything you get in the top of the line F-150, you can now get in multi-trim levels, multi-sizes, there's six different trim levels, ranging from everything in the F-350 to that mid-30,000 range, all the way up to the F-450, limited every option of the sun for $90,000. So this is something that that is very important. You can look at a truck that starts in the mid-30s, right? and all of a sudden you're looking at 90 G, that's almost three times. Trucks, big trucks are now coming in almost at $100,000. You can buy an F-150 loaded up, at, or a Ram, or a Silverado, or you know any of those types of trucks easy into the 90s. Remember, when you start adding all the goodies, some stuff's standard, some stuff's extra, you can get the carbon bed on the GM truck. Yeah. That isn't gonna come cheap. Yeah. So when you start looking at all the different costs and you start layering them in, start thinking about what you need versus what you want. If you're using it as a work truck and that's all, you're not gonna put all that extra stuff on there. But if you're using it as, this is my one and only vehicle, I'm gonna use it off-road on the weekends, I'm gonna use it for towing, then this may be the vehicle for you. But one of the reasons why we were in Texas is that I'm trying to remember if it was a quarter or a third of their business in F-150 is in the state of Texas. The bulk so, of their business. So if, if you're from where you are in Buffalo or where I am in Chicago, uh, you, you think of a pickup truck as, yeah, desirable, and some people have them for an everyday vehicle. Right. You get down into the Sunbelt states, all of a sudden, this is a prime vehicle for transportation. So, you know, yeah, you're going to sell, you say, well, it's a 250 it's, and it's going to be purely a work truck. No, it's not. Right. Uh, it, it could certainly be both, but it's also absolutely accepted as the prime vehicle. That's true. So if you're thinking about buying this truck, we have ranked all the different categories for car coach reports please look down there we'll give you some specs and some information that you might want and uh, we looked at a whole lot of stuff on this vehicle and now we come to find out that after all of that and with the way we feel about this we are one point apart yeah and we were a lot, a lot of different variances i came in at a 96 there was a few things i thought fell short and those are down below and you can see that and paul where'd you come in uh 95 95 We've been doing this a long time, and if we can help you make better choices on vehicles, then Car Coach Reports has done their job. We appreciate your support, our Patreon page. Thanks so much for Thanks. watching. Take care. We appreciate it. We love the comments.